we are back yeah we are welcome ladies and gentlemen to the third episode of get it right with justice today we'll be discussing a very interesting supreme court judgment and that is the case of neoplast industries versus the commissioner of lands and the attorney general this is a supreme court judgment number eight of 2001 judgment that was delivered by the then acting deputy chief justice sakala very interesting judgment you know in judgment when you read so many sides will really come and you're really compelled to believe that indeed something judges of course with the cream de la cream the supreme court are really intelligent you know what i mean <laughs> anyway to too many praises, too much praises might make you end up insulting the king. This case, ladies and gentlemen, really brings out a number of important principles that have got theoretical and practical implication. It discusses the rules of procedure that Zambia uses and in what events the Zambia seek recourse the English rules and procedure in what events he proceeds also to discuss when judicial review can be employed and when it cannot be employed further the case goes on to also discuss and gives a light as to what the court would deem as the party to have been given an opportunity be heard is it only when a party makes an appearance in court or even in instances when they do not make an appearance in court but they adduce oral evidence or well, to find out more this case espouses those principles so stay glued the salient facts for the case were that new blast industries of course, appellant in this case, and the Commission of Lands and the Attorney General are the respondents. They procured, the appellants, you know, plus industries procured a land, a land that was later on believed and known to have been procured fraudulently. And this is, of course, what made the chief registry to well, order that the titles the line weren't going to be in the name of new plast and further that the land should be taken back to the owner or should be given back to the owner agreed by this decision of the chief registry new plast industries commence an action in the high court by means of judicial review when this took effect the Commissioner of Lands and the Attorney General raised a preliminary issue which was to the effect that the mode of commencement of an action by New Plast Industries was irregular and this was to the effect that Section 87 of the Lands and the De- of the Lands and Deeds Act are provided for the procedure that was to be taken and used in an event where a party was aggrieved by the decision that was made by the chief registry and that procedure was by means of an appeal and not judicial review so a preliminary issue is essentially a concern that a party raises before the judge and this concern is of course urgent and it requires the court to place or put its attention to read so the lands the commission of lands and the attorney general raised that concern to say but wait before the substantive judgment can be made on this matter this matter is irregular because section 87 of the lands and deeds act provides for that instead of using judicial review when a party is aggrieved by decision of the chief registry a party is supposed to use is supposed to institute a claim or start a matter in the high court by means of an appeal 
grounding itself on this law, a provision of statute, the High Court dismissed the claim, saying that it was irregular. That was the ruling of the High Court, ruling that it was irregular because it wasn't supposed to be instituted in court by means of judicial review. The matter proceeded to the Supreme Court. Of course, again, New Plast Industries very much agreed this time around, saying that no, a decision that was taken by the High Court wasn't supposed to be taken in that particular order and sense, and this was because what compels the mode of commencement of an action in court is the kind of relief that is being sought. And this was really, an, you know, a, a very, very clever, um, you know, argument or contention that was actually raised by the appellant. What they were essentially saying was that what is going to determine the kind or the mode of commencement of a matter in the High Court is what the party is trying to get from court. So in this sense, they were trying to seek a prerogative remedy. So a prerogative remedy are those remedies that um, at the that are all, that, that, that are discretionary and they're given by by a court, not as of right, but is where a party obviously needs to ask the court, but the court out of discretion that is when they're going to give grant that kind of remedy and this is of course um, the party trying to obviously ask for a prerogative remedy such as amendments, um, a rate of certiorari or a prohibition. So this is what New Plus Industries contended and on the other hand the respondent really stood their ground to say this kind of commencement or mode of commencement was still irregular on the basis that the act had already provided for the procedure that was to be taken. And this is what now the Supreme Court was left to of course ride on and make a determination of the arguments that were given by to parties. So the Supreme Court, in trying to determine this matter, had this to say. They first started by looking at Section 10 of the High Court Act. And Section 10 of the High Court Act provides for the rules and procedure that the High Court uses in determining matters that are brought before it. And the section of and section 10 of the High Court Act provides for that the court shall use the rules and procedure that are provided for in the act itself, any other written law, and in events where Zambian statute is silent for purposes of substantial conformity, the High Court shall take recourse to rules and procedure of the English courts and of course that is um, the High Court of uh, England basically. Alright so what the Supreme Court is simply trying to say is that the rules and procedure that the High Court is to take in determining matter but before it and those that are provided for in the Act, any other written law that is Zambian law and uh, in an event where our laws of course are silent the miracles can be taken to the rules and procedure of the High Court of England and of course um, the lines and deeds act was the any other law that had provided for the procedure that was to be taken if a matter was to be instituted in the High Court all right and this is what the supreme court was trying to provide or what was the supreme court was simply trying to guide further the rules of procedure that the high court conforms to are those that are set 
of course in order 53 of the rules of the supreme court because it provides for the rules and procedure and um so the supreme court was really at pains in trying to discuss this issue then in trying to answer the contention the question which comes for the appellant had which was the effect that what compels um, the mode of commencement of a matter in, in court is by means of the, the claim that they are trying to seek. This is what the court had to say. That statement or that contention or argument which comes from the appellant that you raised was not in effect and entirely correct because what in substance compels the mode of commencement of a claim in court is by means of what is provided for by statute. So instead of what you're trying to seek, but rather you need to conform by what is provided for in statute. And in this case, what statute had provided for, which is the Lions and Dicks Act, was that if you're not happy with the decision that has been made by the Chief Register, you need to appeal to the High Court and not using judicial review. So in this instance, judicial review cannot, of course, sought by the uh, appellant. And that was wrong on their part to take judicial review as a point or rather as um, a means of them instituting a claim in the High Court. So the case in this regard is important because it provides the rules and procedure that the Zambian High Court conforms to. And we are told, as I reiterate on this point, that the rules and procedure that the Zambian High Court conforms to, number one, are those that are provided for in the, um, in the Act itself, which is basically the High Court Act. And when we talk about the High Court Act, which is, of course, the rules and procedure are those that are under Order 53 of the Rules of the Supreme Court, any other written law that is the Zambian written law, and of course the rules and procedure of the High Court of England, and that is an event now where our laws are silent about a certain matter and issue. So in that regard, that is when we tend to take recourse to the English um, statute providing for the rules and procedure for purposes of substantial conformity. Proceeding, the, the appellant also argued that, well, the High Court judge had never given them an opportunity for them to be heard because the matter was dismissed before they were even given an opportunity to be heard. Rebutting this argument, again, the Supreme Court went on to guide to the effect that, number one, the party uh, at first was actually arguing to the effect that what well, um, determines or tells the mode of commencement is by means of what you're trying to seek and not essentially what, uh, what, what is really provided for in statute. So that being the case already was then being given an opportunity to be heard, except that the Supreme Court had to add this extension where well, they said, you wish to take advantage of the present appeal to make the point that the content of what amounts to the hearing of the parties in any proceeding can take either the form of oral or written evidence. This depends on the nature of the application. Where the evidence in support of an application is by way of affidavit, the deponent cannot be heard to say that he was not denied the right to a hearing simply because he had not adduced oral evidence. So what the Supreme Court was essentially simply trying to say was that where the party well, writes or uses by uh, um, gives evidence by means of what is written in the affidavit, that also will be taken to 
who have been an opportunity for the party to be heard depending on the application that is being uh, taken or instituted in court. In other words, it is not the sole requirement that a party should always be in court present, but in an event where they rely on written evidence or oral evidence, such too will be taken if the party was actually given an opportunity also to be heard depending on the kind of application that was made. As we come to the draw and end of the conclusion of this case review, points to note are that where the statute provides for the mode of commencement of a matter or a matter in the High Court, parties are urged to conform to that mode of commencement, especially where statute provides for the mode of commencement. Second being that the rules and procedure that the High Court conforms to are those that are essentially in the Act itself, which is basically the ones that are under Order 53 of the Rules of the Supreme Court. Number two, any other written statute. And thirdly, the purposes of substantial conformity, where our rules and procedure are silent on a matter that is when recourse can be taken to the rules and procedure of those provided for in the English High Court, the High Court of England. Furthermore, what determines the mode of commencement, I repeat, is what is written in statute and not what is being sought by the party. And of course, judicial review cannot be sought if statute provides for a mode of commencement court and adducing oral evidence is also depending on the application that is that is being made uh, is also a way in which the court can actually take and deem that the party was actually given an opportunity for him or her to be hit well thank you very much ladies and gentlemen this was